Yeah, good morning, uh, dear guests, and good morning, uh, students. Uh, thank you so much for organizing this uh, meeting. And it's very important to, uh, to remember the history and remember uh, all point uh, of view about the uh, uh, Chernobyl disaster. So um, I would like to start just with brief, uh, uh, brief reminder about the catastrophe which has happened in uh, 1986. As you all know, Chernobyl disaster is techn uh, technogenic, ecological and humanitarian catastrophe cased by two thermal explosion and the subsequent uh, destruction of the first power unit of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, located on the territory of the former uh, Ukrainian SSSR or at night of April 26, 1986. The destruction was explosive, the reactor was completely destroyed, and a large amount of radioactive substance was released into the environment, namely its strontium and uranium elements into the air for about 10 days. The catastrophe uh, is considered... Sorry, sorry, Katrina, uh, tell me when I should change the slide because I don't know if I'm keeping up with... Um... Yeah, yeah, next. Sorry. Yeah, next one. Yeah. Uh, the catastrophe is considered to be the largest in the history of nuclear energy, both in terms of the numbers of victims, of its consequences and economic losses. Next one, please. As a result of the Chernobyl catastrophe, about 5 million people were affected and almost 5,000 settlements of Ra uh, Republic of Belarus, Ukraine, and the Russian Federation are lo uh, located in the contaminated area. In addition to Ukraine, the Republic of Belarus and Russia Federation, the territory of Sweden, Austria, Norway, Germany, Finland, Greece, Romania, Slovenia, Switzerland, have been significantly uh, polluted as a result of Chernobyl disaster. Of these 2,293 uh, villages, towns, and cities in Ukraine, with a population of more than uh, two and a half uh, million. Territory of uh, 2,600 uh, square kilometers, it's uh, something like 1,000 square miles, contaminated with trans uranium elements. 96 neighborhoods evacuated forever. 163,000 people uh, resettled in uh, obligatory order. Uh, almost 500,000 liquidators engaged in the process of liquidation of disaster consequences. The cost of overcoming the consequences of the Chernobyl catastrophe uh, was a heavy uh, border on the economy uh, on the economy of the uh, USSR. Direct losses and cost from all sources of financing release to the Chernobyl disaster estimated for the period 1986 and 1989 amounted to approximately uh, 12 and a half billion US dollars. According to the calculation of Ukrainian specialists, the total economic losses for Ukraine uh, amounted to at least 180 billion US dollars, included the amount on interest uh, losses uh, and uh, uh, due to non use of contaminated agricultural land, water, and uh, forest source as well as the uh, reduction of electricity production. Because of accident, uh, Ukraine takes uh, the second, yeah, next one, please. Okay. Ukraine uh, takes uh, uh, the second uh, place in Europe and uh, falls in the world by the amount of radioactive waste it has. In this regard, our state put an important role on our agency of Ukraine on exclusion zone management in long-term storage and disposal of radioactive waste. 
Uh, next one, please. Taken about high level coordination of our activity, it is important to note uh, that we are coordinated by Cabinet of Minister of Ukraine through the Minister of uh, Ecology of Ukraine, who uh, direct and coordinate the, acti the agency activity. Next one, please. Uh, state agency uh, of Ukraine on exclusion zone management is central executive body responsible, uh, responsible for strategic direction, directions as follows. Next one, please. Next, yes. Uh, exclusion zone management, overcoming the consequences of Chernobyl accident. Chernobyl nuclear power plant decommissioning and transformation of the shelter object into an ecological safety system. State management in the area of radioactive waste management and the stage of the long-term storage and disposal. Next one, please. Chernobyl exclusion zone is the area that have, uh, has been forbidden for free access and has been heavily contaminated by long uh, life radiant nuclides due to the accident and Chernobyl nuclear power plant. As of today, the territory uh, is divided into main parts. Next one. The 10 kilometer zone is the territory of special industrial use, uh, specially created to place their facilities of renewable energy and storages for radiative radioactive waste and the 30 kilometer zone uh, whereby the degree of the president Chernobyl radiation and ecological biosphere resort was created. Next one. The territory uh, of special industrial use so-called 10 kilometer zone which is around Chernobyl nuclear power plant will able, uh, enable using the highly contaminated territory to enhance the mechanism of radioactive waste management and create the opportunity of uh, uh, appropriate infrastructure. There is the amount of numbers of facilities within the territory designed to store and process the radioactive waste. You can see all this picture. Is this is uh, our facilities is located uh, in this uh, 10 kilometer zone. Um, we can see this uh, storage is for Disney site, Chernobyl nuclear power plant, and uh, other facilities, uh, vector complex, uh, Burekivka. Uh, it's all special um, facilities uh, for radioactive waste management and storage. Uh, next one, please. The creation in 1986 of the shelter object over the destroyed fifth power unit protected the environment from radiation uh, dissemination and people uh, primarily who, who work in Chernobyl nuclear power plant site from contamination. The cell shelter object has been performing its protective function for more than 30 years. So the decision was taken to build a new construction to protect people and environment for longer period, namely new safe confinement. As of today, the construction of new safe confinement, which is the biggest mobile, is completed, uh, biggest mobile construction in the world, actually. Uh, for today, it is completed and moved about the fifth destroyed unit and new safe confinement will serve for 100 years. Uh, today, uh, we can see uh, he, this uh, huge uh, confinement and you can see how big it is uh, the more, and how how very uh, not big uh, and heavy and also very expensive construction. And uh, we, uh, our agency and especially Ukraine, it's appreciate help of all donors who were engaged on this process. Uh, this uh, um, new safe confinement was built for 10 years. And uh, you see the cost more than one and a half billion dollars and uh, so big uh, found 
uh, was created uh, from donors to uh, to help Ukraine to save uh, to save uh, our uh, how would say uh, security and safety in this field. Um, next one, please. Uh, created within this uh, 30 kilometers exclusion zone, the largest resort in Ukraine is the basis for extremely important and unique nature experiment, not only in our country, but also in the world. Despite the fact that exclusion zone has uh, suffered incredible losses, now it is the center of amazing animal and plant world. We can deny that uh, nature is much more powerful even than such a terrible anthropogenic factor as the Chernobyl catastrophe. According to scientists, there can be more than, next one please, Uh, there can be more than 400 species of animals, birds, and fish include, included to Red Book of Ukraine that need our protection. To date, uh, 300 species have already been identified, 66 species included to Red Book of Ukraine, uh, red list of uh, treated species. More than 1,200 types of uh, higher uh, vascular have been found. 61 species included to Red Book of Ukraine, red list for traded species. Next one, please. We can see that fauna and flora is amazing, uh, renew itself. Uh, it is magic uh, what is nature can do it uh, without uh, human impact, without anthropogenic impact. The main uh, focus of the scientists in the rare and uh, typical species of fauna, la large predator, brown bears, lynx, wolf, and others. From 2018, the Chernobyl Radiation and Environment Biosphere Reserve actively participated in the international project and organized the first scientific expedition to study the flora and fauna of the expedition of the exclusion zone territory. Uh, the main goals of uh, uh, this research is um, ensure support and increase the barrier function of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Remediation of the area contaminated of radionuclides and stabilization, it is a hydrological regime. Uh, conducting scientific research in the field of environment protection and organizing and conducting of international scientific research, conduct, uh, conducting of ecological and education work. So, so many activities, next one, uh, we have in the base of uh, our, uh, our uh, biosphere resort. So um, also uh, in, in um, our agency is uh, so touched with international uh, partners and uh, we have a lot of international, uh, international cooperation activity uh, with IEA, European Bank, Bank NATO uh, and uh, others, our partner, uh, because uh, to be honest, Ukrainian budget is uh, weak in this um, in this sphere. So without international cooperation, without international donors, unfortunately, to keep all the safety and security and manage all this radioactive amount of radioactive waste and uh, manage this territory is impossible. So that's why our agency provide close cooperation with international organization and countries to strengthen the non-proliferation regime and uh, radioactive uh, materials. Next one. Uh, 
we also trying to use uh, all possibility uh, to use uh, infrastructure, energy infrastructure and land which is contaminated. That's why we provide, we're trying to provide uh, the alternative energy projects. Uh, we have close cooperation with NG, with International Finance Corporation. Uh, we do make research uh, uh, for uh, feasibility study um, for uh, implementation of project of alternative energy wind and solar power. So uh, we do hope that the future of exclusion zone is also the green project and green generation. And actually, in 2019, uh, we uh, we started first project uh, in a nearby atomic station, uh, Chernobyl uh, nuclear power plant. The first um, project of alternative energy solar uh, solar uh, panels for one megawatt power. It started working and give energy uh, to the grid. Uh, and we say that the exclu uh, Chernobyl uh, power plant is first power plant in Ukraine, which was commissioning. It's first power plant, which is decommissioning and first power plant where green energy is, uh, uh, is uh, located. So such a unique uh, territory, unique power station we have today. Um, so, from from big perspective, exclusion zone is very uh, unique territory. We open for cooperation, and uh, I think uh, many of you uh, heard about movie HBO movie, uh, which was uh, stretching the cooperation with um, all over uh, all over the world. Uh, cooperation with uh, tourist side. We got so many activity of uh, tourists in last years, but uh, unfortunately, pandemic is um, uh, stopped a little bit this cooperation. But uh, we do hope that uh, uh, in the time of pandemic, when it's finished, we will have also the visitors and uh, we will have activity again. Uh, so uh, we uh, we invite all of you to visit the exclusion zone, to visit the, the animals, uh, flora, fauna, and to see all infrastructure we have uh, inside the 10 kilometer zone for radioactive waste management. Uh, so if you have some question, let's start discussion because I'm sure in the time of discussion, we can more uh, found the uh, found the answers for questions you have. Well, thank you, Katerina, uh, very much for um, for your overview. And um, in your remarks, I, I saw that you focused more on the present day of uh, Chernobyl and future rather than the past. And I sort of um, agree that, you know, we could learn more uh, from the history um, HBO series Chernobyl uh, gives an overview. And my question would be, you know, how accurate do you think it, it was portrayed, the Chernobyl accident uh, in that movie? But you could address this later in your comments. Uh, I want to first, you know, encourage our fellows uh, to ask questions if they have any. And if we have time, they, we could talk about tourism uh, because I have um, some concerns about uh, <laughs> that. Uh, but I will um, open the floor for questions, please. And please introduce okay. yourself so Katerina knows where, you, where you're from and what is your affiliation. That would be good if you could do that. Thank you. Please, please go ahead. Yes, sorry. Nasir, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Margarita, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you so much uh, for this um, uh, interesting talk about Chernobyl. Um, uh, I was just, I was a little, little int intrigued by this. I think you have to mute your speaker somehow.
shall I try now? Yes, I no. Still there's the echo of my voice. I think one of the speakers is on. Okay, I can just give a try. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, like, I ha I'm having a, a couple of questions, a very short, short and very foundational questions. My first question is like, I was intrigued by this idea of movable construction. Uh, to what extent this idea has been proliferated or, or, or adopted by other states where we have nuclear power plants? Uh, that's one thing, because to me, it, it looks, it's a kind of novel idea, okay, that in like, like you have such kind of things, okay, and such things can 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 contain the damage, okay, and and, and this uh, fallout of radioactivity. My second question is that to what extent local communities should be or shall be concerned whenever they see a new power plant in their surrounding? Uh, like, do we have to really worry about it? Do we have to question the governments and local authorities that to what extent we are safe? to uh, save from the hazard in case some hazards happens over there because of the nuclear power plants. And my third question is that how do you see the trend of this nuclear energy in the upcoming years and decades? Like, is it going to be uh, more and more in the world? Or, or, are we going to move away from nuclear and uh, nuclear energy? Uh, thank you so much. And, and, and my name is uh, my name is Dr. Nasser, and I happen to be a faculty member. Uh, unfortunately, it's so bad connection. But how? Okay. Uh, did Did you get questions? Uh, I, I. It's not. It's not clear. But uh, I can start, and maybe it's something I not understand. You, you can help me because it's. I lost a little bit connection. Uh, first of all, uh, how I understand the uh, uh, first question, it was regarding movement uh, uh, construction. Yes, yeah? this uh, new safe confinement. Or what do you mean, move, big movement? Nasir, do you want to um, uh, repeat yes. your first question, please? Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I was just asked, like, I was intrigued by this idea of movable construction. Uh, and I was thinking that it's a novel idea. And I was, and I was interested to know that to what extent other nuclear power states, they have adopted this idea. Okay, I understand. Um, uh... First of all, I would like to uh, say thank you for this uh, interest. Okay, uh, Katerina, we are, we are losing you. Um, uh, you froze, I think. Nuclear power. Nuclear power plant. Katerina, could you turn off your video because you froze? Maybe with your video off, you will be able to answer questions more easily without the um, interruption. Um, Margarita, may I ask others also to turn the videos off just to, for, for the purpose of uh, Katerina's response? Yeah, let's see if she could come back. Katrina, are you there? Um, she may be reconnecting. Uh, but I was thinking, you know, if we have our colleagues from Ukraine while Katrina is connecting, maybe they could uh, comment on at least some of the questions which uh, Dr. Nasir have. May I try to answer on the first question? Sh sure, please. Mm -hmm. It, first of all, it's necessary to explain why was made the decision to create moving construction. It's because the level of radiation close to the Unit 4, Chernobyl NPP, was so high that it was not impossible to walk directly uh, on the facility. <clears throat> so it was made a decision to build uh, this construction, safety confinement, uh, close to nuclear power plant and uh, after the construction will be completed, move it 
uh, on a facility. Uh, yes, it's true that uh, it is the biggest in the world moving construction, and it was a challenge uh, to create it, uh, but it was done. I am answering your question, Ms. Uh, yes, very much. And, and the second bit of my question was that to what extent this idea has been has been sold to the other other nuclear states okay or uh, to what extent the other states they are trying to to follow this kind of model of movable construction thank you okay timothy or maybe you have to answer while katarina is reconnecting <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you uh as I explained, the reason why it was movable is because the unit was destroyed. Uh, for other nuclear countries, uh, one of the reasons uh, why we have so much uh, donors who support uh, this construction is that uh, the different countries like uh, Russian Federation US and China, first of all, was interested in this construction uh, as a possibility of creating, for example, the giant hangars for airplanes, aircrafts, or other needs. Uh, so they was involved uh, also in this project uh, and have access to all this new technology which was developed during implementation of this project. Uh, we have a support all, also the engineering support from Germany, uh, France, also. Uh, so yes, they have access uh, to these materials, I mean, uh, drawings, uh, engineering, different approaches, and they can use them in their own countries. It's uh, information not classified for them. I'm answering your question, Nazi, or maybe. Yes, very much. And it is always a pleasure to hear from you, Timothy. Thank you. And I guess the last question Nasir had was about the uh, attitude of uh, population, you know, to the nuclear energy, right? Is that Nasir, or you could repeat it again if you wish? I, I, yes, Margarita, you're absolutely right. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have Timofey. We also have our former fellow uh, Hannah Martinenko and other students from Ukraine. So um, or, or professionals, while Katerina is out, please, uh, if you wish to speak, please do so. I have a follow-up question with regards to the moving containment. Uh, Stacey, I think we're still answering the. Sorry, we're still answering that question about about nuclear energy and the attitudes of uh, population of Ukraine. Uh, if okay. you just hold on for a second, I'm very sorry. So, if somebody okay. from the Ukrainian colleagues could take that question, Hannah, I see that you unmuted. Would you like to speak? Hello. So uh, Hannah, Natalia, you're all our former fe fellows. Uh, <laughs> you, you could take a floor if you want. Hello. Oh, oh. Katerina is back. So Katerina. Yeah. Uh, we, OK. Um, the question is, that we are now at the third question. Uh, Timofey covered the first two questions. But if you want to provide yeah. some additional comments, and also the question about the nuclear energy development and the, um, uh, you know, the views of our population on the development of nuclear energy. I, I, I'm ready to, uh, to uh, comment this. Uh, first of all, uh, how today mention uh, the general, uh, general uh, director of IEA, uh, Mr. Rossi. Uh, a few a future of uh, population of the world, it's impossible without nuclear. We can consider the fact. Uh, and second of all, uh, of course, uh, we have some treats from this uh, kind of energy, but especially I can, uh, I can uh, comment the uh, uh, disaster in Chernobyl nuclear power plant. We should all the time uh, be aware of type of reactor. The type of reactor on Chernobyl nuclear power plant was really this uh, kind with some kind of maybe uh, mistake reaction or 
something like that because it was kind of RBMK reactor. And all the rest, uh, for example, in Ukraine, uh, power, uh, nuclear power, we have uh, 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 water, uh, VVR, uh, thousand reactors. So uh, the type of RBMK, it's of course uh, uh, was dangerous, that's why uh, decision was taken in 1996 to stop all all three units because actually after accident uh, unit one two or three was uh, operated into operated again and uh, after decision was taken to stop this kind of reactor because uh, it uh, it was uh, some kind of uh, danger. Uh, danger things or danger understanding of population of our and our government um, and also we know that um, nuclear power is uh, really friendly with environment and uh, that's why without nuclear power and especially in ukraine we have 66 percent more than 50 percent today we have uh, electricity and energy uh, from power units. So for some countries, maybe it is possible to survive without uh, uh, atomic uh, stations, but uh, for some countries, it's uh, almost impossible. So that's why we should uh, just uh, stretch in the safety and security on this uh, uh, side and be aware of, of, of all threats, but we should be, we should see our future uh, with uh, nuclear power. Uh, thank you, Katerina. I think we'll proceed to the next question, which Stacy had. Uh, Stacy, please, uh, did you, did you wanna ask your question? My question was a follow-up question to Nasir's about the movable containment, what materials are being used and how will they be able to transport the whole containment given that we know co containments use concrete and steel. And please introduce yourself too so uh, uh, speakers know where you're coming from. My name is Stacy Achoki, I'm from Kenya. I recently graduated from South Korea with a master's in nuclear and radiation safety. Thank you. Uh, Margar Margarita, unfortunately, I also lost a little bit uh, connection. Can you repeat this Stacy uh, question, please? Uh, Stacy could say it again, so she she had it. It's a my question was with regards to the movable containment. Given that it's made of concrete and steel, uh, what materials were used for this one, and how will they be transported given the weight of this material? Uh -huh. Um, uh, material of uh, new safe confinement, you mean, yes? Yes. Um, it is totally, uh, totally built it from steel and uh, it was uh, it was built it near by reactor, but not directly on, uh, uh, on the reactor. And uh, it will build it nearby, but after by a railway, special railways, uh, we will move it. Uh, uh, we will move it this confinement to the uh, fifth unit. And um, this railway, it was specially uh, special and designed from uh, our partners from France. Uh, they were created this uh, design uh, and uh, this special uh, railway was used to move this uh, big, big construction into the first unit. And it's totally from steel. Uh, inside we have uh, some climate, uh, clima uh, control and it's uh, also, um, also with some special uh, uh, design, uh, but uh, the arch, uh, how we say this new safe confinement also have a uh, name arch. So this arch is uh, mostly from steel. Thank you. I think I saw Noah uh, raising the hand uh, a while ago. Noah, would um, you like to yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, 
So you, you mentioned the HBO series. That's a question that I can't resist. Um, my question was, was less about whether or not it was accurate um, and more a question of, um, did it have a positive effect on, on your agency, the, the Exclusion Zone Management Agency? Outside of tourism, you mentioned tourism. Um, did it help bring attention to the needs of the agency? And if not, what are the most pressing needs of the, the, the state agency for Exclusion Zone Management? Um, what, 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 what needs attention? Uh, thank you, uh, Noah, for questions. So, um, we um, first of all, I would like to mention that uh, uh, the strategic uh, strategic goals for agencies, of course, not development of tourism to this area. And I can't say that it's tourism. I'm like an uh, expert in this sphere. I would like to name all these people who go into Chernobyl like visitors. I don't like the name of uh, tourism. And uh, first of all, we are interested in of visitors from scientist side, because uh, scientists, they can bring, we have good, big cooperation actually with uh, uh, Fukushima University and uh, uh, the scientists from all over the world, uh, it is a big, um, uh, the cooperation, especially with scientists, it is uh, a priority. But uh, we cannot also close this territory from society, from public, from tourists, because uh, the more people, uh, the more you close from people, the more stories is going around. That's why decision was taken uh, to, um, to provide this kind of uh, tours for tourists and to, you know, to help people to understand the Chernobyl from other side, because it is a lot of fairy tales and stories going around that we have some mutants and so on. But when people is uh, coming to this unique territory, they can see that we have uh, so beautiful nature there. We have a lot of, of course, historical part. And um, but for me, sometimes I say that potentially uh, uh, every tourist is potentially can be some terrorist. So. Uh, we also should be careful with uh, these uh, programs and that's why we provide also some uh, security part we have uh, some uh, some rules where you cannot make picture where you cannot make movies and uh, so on but not all the time uh, the guide and the tourist is following this rule this is unfortunately uh, the part and also now uh, in September last year we start uh, uh, moving the spent nuclear fuel from storage of uh, water storage to um, a new um, storage for dry uh, store. So this process is uh, specially uh, detected and special, uh, specially um, provides some rules uh, in uh, which is uh, considered that tourists can be uh, cannot be in this territory where this uh, spent nuclear fuel is uh, uh, transported. So um, yeah, it is uh, very uh, very significant questions and issue for our agency. But I won't mention that our agency is strategically direction is to radioactive waste management and the decommissioning of a nuclear power plant and not providing the tourist in exclusion zone. But historically happens that we have these visitors and that's why we should deal with these issues as well. Thank yeah, you. Uh, yeah. uh, so, uh, any other questions uh, from the audience? Or maybe comments uh, to what uh, Katerina, you know, or maybe comments to some of the questions which already have been addressed? I, I have two questions. Please, uh, yes, uh, who is that? Stacy. Oh, Stacy, hi Stacy. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Um, my question, one question is given the coal melted, were nearby water bodies affected by this? 
by this factor. Then my second question is, it was sparked by um, the previous question from the series. There are some facts that were not right. Um, has there been any efforts to clarify a few of the facts that were not brought out clearly in the movie? Thank you. Um, I clearly understand the first question is uh, uh, how many people was affected, yes? Um, no, the question was given that the core melted, when nearby water bodies affected, did it melt all the way down to affect the water table? Uh, water, um, Margarita, help me, water, what? I think that the water, the water resources, right? I mean, the you mean the rivers? Ah, water resources. How? Uh, Contamination, um, maybe. Uh, yeah, water resource. We uh, no. It actually we can consider that it's uh, affected just um, prepaid. We have uh, uh, water a river. Um, uh, Water river uh, prepaid uh, in exclusion zone, but it's not affected so that its radionuclides it's moving all over to Dnieper river. So um, the, uh, how we understand and we all know that all nuclear power plant uh, should have some uh, water to cooling uh, uh, to cool out the um, reactor. So we had this um, special pump, uh, which uh, nearby, uh, you can see it's in the map, it's nearby the reactor. But this pump and this water was stopped pumping uh, in uh, 2010 or 11 uh, in, this, uh, in this time. And this pump is, uh, level of this pump is, more higher than a uh, river. So that's why all radionuclides, they stay in this pump. They not moving to this river because this pump is higher levels than this river. So uh, we can say that the water source is not affected, but uh, of course in this uh, prepaid river, we have uh, down uh, some, um, metal construction or which was in 1986 is uh, uh, put in, into this water and of course we should be careful to uh, to touch or to move this uh, inside the water inside the river because uh, wherever it can happen we don't know how contaminate this metal things that's why we should be very, uh, very careful uh, how we deal in this uh, prepaid river prepaid, but especially Dnipro River and all other water sources were not affected. Uh, do you want to take another question, Stacy? Had about how you want to, you know clarify some of the points which were maybe uh, misrepresented in the HBO that Chernobyl and what are you doing to address these inaccuracies? Um, uh, Margarita, I really have bad connection. I don't, sorry, I, I, I can't hear what... Uh, so maybe uh, Stacy could repeat your question again. Stacy, maybe one more time. And maybe just... from audience, I see the Natalia Klos is engaged with us, and uh, uh, someone from audience, if uh, from our side, uh, can help me because it's a really bad connection. I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, so does anybody want to answer this question? I actually missed the question, to be honest, so I can't repeat from, uh, for Katerina again. So, so, Stacey, could you please state it again one more time, because I think I, it's, it's a very good question. Um, let's try one more time. <laughs> um, my question was with regards to the HBO series. There are some parts in the series that were inaccurate. 
have there been any efforts to communicate this to the public and correct them or what has been done about it? Katrina, can you hear us? Kat, Katya. Okay, so the question is, uh, what it? Uh, it's, a, it's a like long story with HBO project, as far as I know, uh, Kat. It's about uh, HBO приходило в агентство погоджувати весь цей сценарій, і як чином ви мали можливість публічно відповісти на, на ті недолугі, недолугості, які були в сценарії. Чи ви Please translate, Stacy, just in case you, yeah. Um, um, uh, I, can, I, can just, uh, I can just comment that, uh, uh, of course, HBO never, uh, HBO just ask us to, uh, to have, uh, uh, to, to help to provide the tour to see uh, to be in Chernobyl inside an exclusion zone but of course they not discuss with agency about the scenario and uh, all the things because we are not uh, a political part to, to decide what they can show or not the decision was taken by uh, by HBO what they want to, to, to show and I think they had some investigation with some uh, parties who were in, in, engaged in this time to, to with this whole process with uh, accident during the accident and during last uh, uh, 35 or 33 years ago. Uh, but the uh, agency have nothing to do with the uh, scenario and agency is just uh, provide the enter to, to, uh, to our uh, to exclusion zone. There was uh, plenty interviews with the uh, main person who actually was story it uh, by HBO scenario circulated around. And uh, she says that they didn't ask her any interview and uh, she was was very disagree with all story of how they, they show it. But since it's a movie, they all, of course they want to show some difficulties that people really like a heroes should against. And not everything was uh, adequate actually to the real situation of what happened. Of course, it, it's not easy, but some things are too irradiated. Thank you. So, uh, does anybody have any other questions? Uh, or comments? May, may I ask a question? Yeah, of course, please. Okay, thank you so much. It's again just out of curiosity, okay. Um, since we have this, this this undowered episode of Chernobyl, I just want to know that how did how did children and kids, okay, they were they were like uh, like how they responded and, and, and what kind of ordeal or what kind of experience do they have about this incident? Thank you. Uh, you mean children which was affected by uh, by catastrophe at yes, that time. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have uh, so much research and don't have data where all these children after war moving out and where they live. But uh, some cases uh, we heard that it somehow affect the the by radiation but if we if we see the reports from uh, world uh, international uh, and world um, uh, association of uh, uh, health uh, the decision of these reports we can see that the um, effects of stress when people was moved out from the houses and uh, all this uh, you know, stories about the danger of radiation, it will more affect people than radiation. So um, this is a, a world-known uh, decision of uh, all international uh, association. So, um, of course, 
some people of liquidators, they were affected so much by uh, radiation and they were dead in a few days or few weeks after. But uh, we don't know uh, what has happened exactly with child this time. But I know that pregnant women were uh, rejected to, to, to don't uh, burn child in some parties, but uh, especially uh, the world known uh, decision and result of investigation is that impact of this stress, impact of this, this um, uh, not understanding of, uh, uh, of um, how many millisieverts everyone can have or don't have, this uh, stress for human more affected than uh, the, the radiation was in this time. And also children was in the first left of all evacuation from the Lipid. And uh, uh, I need to say that there was a huge support of Ukraine from different countries how to, uh, to take children to their countries to support their health, actually. There was an excellent program and she finished like three years ago only. All this time there was a special program for children of the Chernobyl accident who actually goes to Cuba for, for their health. And, and there was a plan to different countries, actually. I don't know the whole, whole names, but they really support Ukraine how to deal with consequences and uh, uh, take visitors from our country to support our children. Thank you so much. I have a question if nobody are from the audience or well. Unless somebody has uh, a question, I will give you the floor. But I, um, and I, I was actually prompted. So I guess I, I will have... ask the question. Uh, please, Nasir, please go. Ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Again, out of, out of my curiosity, okay, that, that how do you compare and contrast this episode of Chernobyl with the Fukushima? To what extent they are these like like identical episodes in terms of the uh, in terms of the failure in terms of the consequence cons consequences and to what extent they, they they were different from each other and what is there okay in, in them into them for us okay, for the future thank you um, if you compare these two tragedies uh, tragedy with uh, Fukushima, um, first of all, we can consider that uh, by Fukushima is what not uh, uh, so much affected as well uh, territory like um, uh, with uh, Chernobyl accident. So Fukushima actually uh, take other strategy to, uh, to deal with consequences. They take up uh, five uh, millimeters, uh, five centimeters of ground soil and they put in uh, some bag and uh, store in some storage. So they clean very fast the territory and uh, in some um, nearby territories, nearby uh, Daiichi site, it's already people can live and uh, uh, take the opportunity to, uh, to be on this territory. Of course, nearby the reactor, nearby close to reactor, it's very dangerous and it's high level, but uh, nearby Daiichi, Aside, uh, the territory is uh, located not uh, far. It's also cleaned now because they take up and take uh, to store this uh, ground soil. So they take other um, strategy to to deal with these issues and also. Uh, we know that it's a little bit uh, other situation because they stay nearby the ocean. So they have other opportunity to work with and it's, um, yeah, it's too different. 
and uh, it's happened in uh, 10 years ago and uh, it's happened in a, a country where they uh, directly start uh, to deal with consequences and unfortunately in ssr they were thinking too long you know in some parties where they can deal directly so of course we can say that when people from Pripyat was moving out from houses and the story was that they moved just for a few weeks and it will be clean again and they come back maybe in some how it was good story because if SSSR says in this time that you um, uh, you move forever then can you imagine how big mess it can come because people will uh, pack the clothes and take some things with them and yeah it can be mess so that's why um, it's too different uh, strategy to to uh, work with consequences uh, that's why um, and it's happened 35 years ago i can mention one more time that it was as a uh, as a century and as a meaning and as understanding and uh, um, uh, Fukushima Daiichi and the uh, Japanese uh, uh, our colleagues and partners of course they uh, we create some special international project it's called satraps we have a big cooperation with uh, Fukushima site in this case uh, especially to learn different because difference we cannot now speak too much about difference before it will be learned and uh, uh, make it officially some uh, decision on this but uh, from my perspective i can say that it's too different timing uh, 1986 and uh, 2011 is uh, different, uh, different uh, time and different world. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, it was actually my question last year. I I was going to ask about Fukushima, so that, I'm glad you did. Um, any other questions? Um, we're going to wrap up soon, but I, I thought I'll give opportunity to um, other people to speak. Uh, I have one question which I want to ask, but I'm saving it. Um, okay, well, maybe I'll just ask. So, uh, Katerina, uh, and uh, there is, we talked about, you know, um, nuclear safety um, at the zone, uh, but what about nuclear security? Uh, is there something that keeps you up at night and, uh, you know, thinking about um, uh, the uh, nuclear security, uh, the, uh, some materials which are uh, still there, which uh, may be a potential, um, you know, magnets to uh, terrorists or uh, anybody else with bad intentions. So uh, can you address uh, that to us um, and see what, you know, also agency does to uh, prevent the uh, diversion of these materials and uh, to uh, pro to protect them from people. Um, yes, uh, all the time we can uh, we can uh, watch so many uh, things has happened all over the world, and especially Ukraine have uh, not very uh, not very good time. Uh, at last uh, years because we have uh, this conflict uh, uh, in Ukraine uh, between uh, Ukraine and Russia Federation. So, and especially for agency, it was open issue and a very important goal to, to, to do something with the border with uh, uh, Republic of Belarus because uh, you know that we have uh, one territory uh, and uh, we have territory uh, which is uh, co connect by uh, forest with uh, Belarus and it's uh, 150 kilometers border and actually it's open border and just uh, three years ago we opened this issue in front of our donors and we trying to uh, get help to uh, start to uh, create the border and uh, to create this border we need to cut 
10 meters uh, line uh, totally clean to point uh, the border and the points of border into the space to um, to make this map so it's long uh, term uh, of project and it's big amount of uh, budget for this project but we started to do it uh, in time is uh, from uh, our independency from 1991 it was never mentioned before we got this and we point this issue so open border it's very important to deal with this issue and also to be careful with tourism because uh, tourism is not, um, it's very uh, yummy piece of pie for, uh, for all our, uh, how to say, uh, very clever uh, business ones. But sometimes business not understand the consequences of some acting in this field. So um, uh, this is two the most important uh, was for me issues to control uh, tourism and control the border. Uh, about materials, uh, I think we deal very good with this uh, uh, with this uh, issue, and uh, uh, we uh, recognize the understanding. We recognize uh, and uh, uh, control all uh, type of uh, um, of dealing with uh, radioactive waste, and uh, we do all possible uh, to manage all this. Um, radioactive waste from SSSR to bring to exclusion zone. We know, you know, all that in uh, former SSSR, we had all over Ukraine located some uh, storages, underground storages uh, for radioactive waste from military, uh, military sphere. And it's very old from 16th, 17th years. So um, I think we do well in this uh, regard. So, uh, but especially with help of donors, especially with help with international society, uh, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, budget of Ukraine cannot support all this activity. So that's why we uh, appreciate help from donors, and uh, it's very important also with uh, staff, with um, our expertise because uh, it's more we have help from donors to uh, make this uh, some special course and special training for our expertise this is very important uh, impact to this uh, to this uh, issue can i comment also absolutely uh, you are uh, one of the experts of nuclear security please <laughs> we would love to hear your opinion well, uh, I would say uh, that important here to understand about nuclear security issues and exclusions on management is uh, to separate uh, understanding what is zone and what is uh, facility, different types of what we have there on, the, on that land. And uh, nuclear security is uh, connected only with existing facilities. So you can cover all those issues, you will uh, block perimeter, you will do all security issues according to Ukrainian legislation. What is proving is uh, in a good high level, of course. And uh, uh, But when we are talking about the security of all exclusion zone, which is very big territory, I think Katerina previously described you how big it is and how different is uh, uh, the situation with uh, forest, land, uh, water, and everything else. You uh, and actually nuclear security requirements is only for uh, nuclear facilities. You can't uh, to take the same security measures to the whole land. And there is a very important issue about human factor. And uh, I'm sorry, there is no protection about the stupid, against stupid people who just want to go there because it's interesting, because it's makes their life more interesting. You can't cover this huge territory with everything just to understand, to collect everybody. We do the best 
And nuclear security is doing uh, according to the requirements as Ukrainian as uh, international, but as Katrina says, some of them really needs to have improvement. But situation right now with nuclear security is pretty much good with nuclear facilities. But as a part, this is a responsibility of the person who goes there, the kind of people like stalkers. This is as an issue. Yeah. Of course. Uh Yes. No, 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 please, please go ahead. And when we are returning to the issue of the border, which is with Belarus and with Russian Federation, with now the strict situation with uh, under our border with the uh, Russian army, this is different point of view. But nuclear security can't cover everything, but it's got connection to the whole exclusion zone. Just don't need to separate those two parts. That's yeah, I, I, yeah I, I, I meant uh, yeah, the industrial zone. That's what I, I should have been clear in my uh, sentence um, question. Yeah, so the critical infrastructure of the zone, that's what I'm saying. I think it's a good uh, issue and it's next step for um, our uh, agency to create uh, some, uh, um, some border control or whatever uh, we can create. Of course, it's huge territory, but um, we have special this uh, um, biosphere reserve to also cover this territory all over around uh, for uh, to, to to control uh, to control uh, people walking around, but uh, of course the stalker we have the stalker, uh, but uh, it is issue for actually for uh, Natalia Klaus uh, uh, side because uh, uh, police and the national guard they should provide also this control. It's not especially issue for our agency. Thank you. Um, any any other questions? Looks like Jenny raised her hand to camera. Yeah. Oh, hi Jenny. Hi. When they can see me from Ukraine and not from California, it's that kind of day. Hi, it's Jenny Grommel from Washington and State Department. I met most of you in the beginning of your course. And the one thing I want to point out that no one here will tell you is that Katrina, Natalia, Hannah, these are the best they've got in Ukraine. And today the director general of the IAEA had their first meetings after meeting President Zelensky and the two of them were front and center and sending me pictures in real time while I'm watching it live with the link from the chief of staff of the IAEA, Jacek Bilicu. You, these are not just young women that know their stuff. They are the leaders in this field globally and locally. And Katrina was writing an article in the middle of the night, like she does on top of everything else and Natalia, um, about the Chernobyl after 35 years and her incredible work on changing the zone into a green zone. And I think it's important that you see and you spread the word about the solar energy, the wind energy, the, the environmental benefits of this place, which so often are sort of lost in the conversation. And the, atomic, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists was so excited about this that they did an interview with her. So I think soon when that interview comes out and that was arranged by Margarita and, and Miles Pomper, we have a group of friends that really look out for each other. And the fact that you're part of this MISS group um, the fact that, that Hanna was there last year, Anastasia, who's a good friend, also at Chernobyl. The fact that we have Timofi with you, that we have Alexander from the Odessa Nonproliferation Center. Um, this is its own mafia and you can't imagine the benefits, the things that it creates. Natalia told me a couple of years ago in a cooperation meeting of donors, we need to have a nuclear security graduate program. So she did it. She said, we need it. And then the Swedes said, well, Sevastopol has been shut down. Timofi also told me over lunch, you know, what do we do when a thousand people in Sevastopol have no more training? 
So we said, we need to do something. We talk about it over lunch. Natalia says, I think I'll do it. Um, um, Margarita Reyes, you know, um, was a, a member of the first class. I mean, you, you cannot imagine what three or four people have done in this country. And I can tell by your own questions that you're used to doing that or you should be used to doing that in your own countries. But I want you to know you need to follow the names of these people that spoke to you today because they are really the global leaders in this. And by having Chernobyl, and you, you, it's not the right word, as their playground, as their backyard, as the place where they can experiment in a way. Katrina is a brilliant engineer. So she decides, let's do wind energy, let's do solar energy and knock back the Russian dependence on, on energy. These are cutting edge things that are going on and you should feel so fortunate that Jean and Margarita and Miles are so connected to them. And just my little part at the State Department is end of year money. We don't have policy money. We bring them to Monterey or to the Vienna VCDNP course or to the safeguards course. And then they put it on their resume as having policy experience. So I give you all this as an example of what you can do having now been there connected to this Monterey program. Promote it to stay connected to the people that you know uh, and the speakers that you have because it's an incredible honor to have, almost have anything to do with these people. And so I just, I make my, my pitch again, thank you to Monterey for your leadership, your outreach, your ideas, your helping people write articles, your connecting people via links all over the world. I worked very closely with them on the Odessa uh, Nonproliferation Center summer school. And now we have a winter school. I mean, one thing leads to another, but it's just my, my pitch to you to take advantage of this opportunity you've been given because it's, it's rare and it's important. Thanks. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I, I uh, think on this uh, you know, uplifting note, uh, we're going to wrap up. Uh, I have one announcement and then I have Jean, uh, Jean also wants to say a few words. Um, uh, we are going to continue our discussion on Wednesday on Chernobyl. Uh, it will not be a duplication, it will be a different angle. It will be focused on discussion between students of uh, Kiev Polytechnic Institute and uh, Middlebury Institute of International Studies. You're welcome to come. We'll send you a flyer. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Timofey Bibik uh, and his student uh, and our student uh, from Monterey who are putting this together. So uh, it will be more focused on students. We'll let them speak. Uh, but Katerina will be also a featured guest and I hope Natalia and others could join us as well. Um, and I think unless uh, Katerina, uh, you have something, uh, or maybe Jean will say a few words uh, to conclude, but if there are so many other little things you want to mention or big things, <laughs> please. Yeah, I, I thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, Jenny, thank you for your words, because uh, really uh, you write this connection and help and this mafia, it is very powerful, uh, powerful uh, instrument now. And this instrument, the international instrument, we can use it wherever we want for safety, security, and uh, for atom for peace. Because it's very important to understand and to connect all expertise in this field together. Uh, because just together we are power, and just together uh, we can uh, we can decide all goals and all issues we, uh, we faced uh, today and in future. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to have this course in Monterey, in uh, Vienna. Uh, it is, uh, it, it is uh, uh, high and it is very important uh, to, uh, to have this um, uh, to have these lessons, to have these stories, to have this history and understanding from point of view from all uh, from all expertise, to have connection with all this expertise. So thank you so much, and uh, I'm looking forward to, for future to cooperate, to cooperate in different direction uh, together. Thank you so much.